Hey everybody, Todd Dills here, your host for Overdrive Radio. This edition, posting to the podcast feed July 21st, 2023, and rolling out to the world famous OverdriveOnline.com Monday the 24th. Today on the podcast, a no doubt equally world famous truck that got its first bit of national notoriety around the time of the Mid America Trucking Show in Louisville last year. Our video from the show of the Cherry Pie 1973 Kenworth W900A of owner operator Kate Whiting has since been viewed tens of thousands of times. And with more show participation since that debut of the Immaculate Custom Restoration, the accolades have just continued to pile up and pile up. Here's Rich Guida of the House Company, Overdrive Radio's sponsor, describing the most recent such accolade, induction of the Cherry Pie W900A and owner-operator Kate Whiting into the Howes Hall of Fame. It's been so great getting to know her, and I've had the privilege of going out to her place, her farm in Chatek, Wisconsin, and uh, it was unbelievable, Todd. The day, it was Mother's Day, and she called, we, we talked the day before, and she said, you know, we had a calf, and it was a tough birth, so, you know, we're taking care of it. Well, when I showed up at her house, that calf was in her kitchen. <laughs> she wasn't kidding. They really took care of it. So, how did she come to uh, um, to you guys' attention? Um, who nominated? Did somebody in particular nominate her? This was um, mostly done through my research at at House, um, and having spent some time um, with with the restoration community. Um, you know, she she kind of rose to the top and and. Uh, was very approachable at Matt's and had some great conversations about what we were thinking of doing. And she and Cherry Pie are, are really representing, a, really representing that that whole community that that is bringing back all these trucks. And and sure. it's it's really cool to see. I know you've seen it, and it's it's amazing to. I mean, I, I fell in love with the same process with cars when I was a little kid, and to see them do it with trucks and so much more surface area to clean. and <laughs> But it, it's really kind of cool. And uh, that, that yeah. cherry pie is beautiful. The rig features an old school reclaimed double eagle sleeper with heart-shaped windows on the sides, a Cat 348 motor, the second engine in its history, and much more that you'll hear about in today's edition. Search Kate Whiting and Cherry Pie at overdriveonline.com too to catch more images of the rig. Likewise, that video I mentioned earlier. As far as the resto community is concerned, Rich is absolutely right about the pride and camaraderie that just flows from it like water. Well evident in our longtime coverage of various restorations, truck shows, and the reader rigs we highlight week in and week out in the reader rigs gallery. What, what really caught our eye is, when talking with Kate, is how the community helps each other out. You know, whether it's yeah. finding, finding a part or a technique for salvaging something i mean that you know there's just so many knowledgeable truckers out there who are really passionate about this and it's it's kind of cool of course we love it as diesel additive manufacturers to see these engines that are still going strong i'll let kate tell you but i mean Cher cherry pie yeah. is going to back she's going to that that truck's going back to work you right. know she's she's almost done showing it off and it's it's ready to become a working truck again which is Amazing. I mean, it's 50 years old, and uh, right. it's it's just such a cool vehicle. Uh, it really yeah. is. What's more, Kate Whiting's story in trucking, too, is wrapped up in the passion for this and other trucks, as you'll hear. Today, she's hauling in a different W900 for Jerry Linander, running mostly furniture in an operation that gets her back home most days at the farm. She's done plenty more OTR work, too, though as Lynn Ender early on urged her to learn the business for herself before she found her way back to his small fleet. I'll be here, you know, I, I see you got the bug, but you got to You got to decide you want this for yourself, not just because I make it easy for you. What I, so really fascinated me when I was learning about the trucking and talking to different people and their companies is I really liked what he did. Um, he, his guys were, you know, all stayed really local. They were busier right. in the winter than in the summer, which worked awesome for what I do because I have the cattle and the horses. And I kept thinking, man, that would be a really great trucking job. And he's like, nope, you got to go and out there a little bit and experience it before you start, you know, thinking we're going to ha start hauling furniture. So, but yeah, he, he and, and you know what? I, I thank him for that because it really did give me some great experiences of, of what, you know, trucking can look like 
other than just this one experience. But anyway, so yeah, the driving, I love it. I love the driving. Of course, I started then um, in the straight truck and then built myself up to my own W900 now that I drive. And it's just a ton of fun, a ton of fun. I enjoy being out here every day. On the other side of a break, the rest of the story about the resto of one beauty of a cherry pie, Kate Whiting's 1973 W900A, the latest member of the Howes Hall of Fame. Stay tuned. Love your diesel? We get it. Protect your investment and maximize performance with Howes Diesel Defender. Increase towing capacity, torque, and power. With Howes, you'll hear the smooth rumble of a clean and well-lubricated engine in no time. Oh yeah, and Howes Diesel Defender will increase your fuel economy by 5% or more. Guaranteed. Howes Diesel Defender. For every diesel. Find plenty more information about Defender at Howes. That's H-O-W-E-S. HowesProducts.com. Here's owner operator Whiting setting up the story of the Cherry Pie 1973 Kenworth W900A. Um, I was working at the health coach. That's kind of been out there a little bit. And um, I just was helping truckers with their med cards. And I attended a um, show in Eau Claire, Wisconsin, uh, my very first truck show. And it was just really eye opening to just be exposed to show trucks. You know, I just wanted to just find truckers. Just wanted to be able to reach out to more truckers and attended the show. And and that was my first introduction to show trucks and, and the the world. So I was, you know, I was sitting there um, hanging out with some of the drivers, uh, Jerry specifically, and he just said, hey, if you really like this, you're going to want to attend Big Iron. Um, the yeah. Big Iron Classic there in Casson, Minnesota. He says there is... You know, it's 600 trucks out there plus it is amazing some great people you're gonna want to check it out and so when I got there um, you know again overwhelmed overwhelmed with what I seen and, and again that connection that connection these um, drivers had with their trucks so many amazing people and at that uh, show then Jerry smarted off and said well you're a farm girl you want to drive it in the parade and I'm like <laughs> All right, be careful, I'll take you up on that, you know? And so that was my first time behind the wheel then, was uh, at the casting show, um, driving his his W900 in the parade. Quick reminder, the reference to Jerry here is to small fleet owner Jerry Linander, mentioned earlier. And uh, it was incredible. Of course, we were at the back of it, so I didn't mess anything up. <laughs> <laughs> Just Bob Taylor, of course. And um, it, it was really a cool experience. And cool. yeah, and that, of course, that is in the fall of the year. And going in through the winter, then I was opened up to helping a lot of um, owner operators um, with the coaching. And it just, again, constantly like, you don't know how hard it is out here. This is, you know, you're telling us to eat this many times and eat this kind of food and really difficult out here. Also, at the same time, some of the places I was helping we're saying, hey, you know, if you had your CDL, we could really use some help now and then, some relief driving, things like that. And that just kind of sparked in my mind that, you know what, that might be something worth going for. And so that uh, next year then, um, going into uh, my first show then the next year, because again, now I got the bug. Then that following spring, I went out to Wheel Jam, then was my next show. Um, I, you know, kind of got the bug and wanted to help Jerry then uh, show his truck. And it was just, again, more and more of, you know, they're the Jake break contest, you know, it's like, oh my gosh, these are just amazing. These are just so <laughs> cool. I'm having so much fun with this. And again, more great people, more of just that, the, the picture, the bigger picture. But right. also, also what happened though at Huron was I started noticing that I was um, picking out one certain kind of truck that was really my my thing i was just like man i really like that truck and he'd be like well you like you know the a's and i'm every time i go to another show i'd be like oh my gosh those are just awesome trucks he's like you really like a's the classic a model kenworth w900 she means and so all it took then was like a couple months after uh south dakota there i was just driving uh, a road i go down all the time back home and lo and behold you know it's like <gasps> Brakes, hit the brakes, hit the brakes. There's one of those trucks. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, it's, you, you, you know, you don't notice white cars until you see, you know, until you own a white car. 
yeah. kind of thing. So it was one of those. Where was it? Truck, it was just uh, about 10 miles down the road from my home. Yep, right there in this, uh, right in the driveway in the front yard, had been sitting there. Um, I stopped right then and there and went <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> And I, I was like, you know, like taking pictures of it and all this. I didn't worry about if, you know, where the owner was or what the story was. I just had to jump out and take a look at this truck and and um, then got to talking to, to Mike and uh, the owner of the truck and older gentleman. That would and be former owner Mike Orton, then retired. The truck had been parked there for, you know, quite some time at that point. So I definitely had been driving past it. But <laughs> it's just, again, I just never noticed it. Um, really just just fell in love with the truck and decided to um you know talk to him about buying it and get him right. you know thinking about all that and and uh it took about a year to convince okay. him to to sell the truck but in the meantime then i really had motivation now to get my cdl and so i went ahead and, and reached out to um one of the fellow drivers i was helping um it's, it was a husband and wife driving team and I reached out to her and asked her, you know, hey, how did you get your CDL? What did you go through? And she helped coach me through the, the you know, preliminary steps of getting, you know, your permit, things like that. Right. And then a couple of the places that I had been working for, helping with the coaching, helped me uh, get my driving practice in. And so within less than a year of driving my very first truck at that parade, I had my CDL. Wow. That's that's a quick turn for a, a health coach, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yep, my very first truck show was 2014. Okay. Um, that was the fall of 2014. Then um, the year I seen Cherry Pie was 2015. I believe that was like June, July 2015. And yeah. then, um, so that was then August of 2015 that I had my CDL. Yep. And let's see here. And then uh, by July, I just came up in my uh, Facebook memories of uh, July here of uh, purchasing cherry pie. Okay. So, <laughs> right, so right. yeah, pretty, pretty cool. To, in 2016, that yeah. is, is when I got her. Yep. 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 And the restoration and, process, uh, or the changes that you made, that, that went on for some time, right? Yeah, you're right. So, um, what's, what was pretty fun then in 2016, my first truck show then, of course, what it was at the very first truck show I ever went to then was I t was able to bring her to Eau Claire, Wisconsin and uh, show her off as, as the little cute little day cab she was and and yeah. um, enjoyed it from there. Did a few truck pulls, had a lot of fun with that. I was pretty green at all that, of course, but she had that, you know, 3408 there. So I had to have a little bit of fun you know, pull up with that, <laughs> <laughs> um, warm, warm the clutch up a few times. Um, <laughs> so yeah, it was pretty fun. And then, um, it just started, you know, you're attending enough of these shows and you're seeing more of these different trucks and you kind of get to thinking how fun it would be to kind of redo it and maybe put a bunk on her and, and things like that. Just kind of think of little things you want to do to kind of stiff her up a little bit. And, um, it just kind of took a life of its own. We found a really cute bunk here locally uh, in Toma, Wisconsin, which was about 60 miles away. And um, that was the Double Eagle. And again, uh, really iconic for the era. And yep. so we really wanted to put the Double Eagle on. So then, you know, you just want to match the paint and we give her a freshen up. And I remember uh, Jerry calling and saying, um, well, everything's apart. And I'm like, what do you mean everything's apart? He's like, well, we're 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 down to the frame rails. And I'm like, <laughs> honestly, I hung up on him. Terrified. <laughs> Terrified what all that meant, because I'm just so new to all this. And um, it, it was just our, our painter kind of went rogue on us. Um, we just had it in just to get the frame rails done and and just kind of you know, clean it up a little bit and just right. match paint so that we can put this bunk on. And um, he just started tearing it apart. And Jerry went to check on it and everything's on the floor. She was tore down and we kind of had to face the fact that, OK, well, we went this far. Then it's like you might as well go a little further and a little further and a little further, you know, and, and that's just what I mean by it takes a life of its own. Um, this is kind of going now through COVID, all the challenges of, of locating parts, um, finding, you know, places to help put it together, or excited 
we were the ones that put it together. But I mean, just, you know, places to get some help with and things like that just had its own challenges, you know, with COVID. Sure. Is this not the same um, original engine in it? Um, she came with a 1693 originally. Um, and it's what's fun having this truck be um, a local her whole life um, is I've had the great privilege of being able to um, chit chat with the guys that used to drive her back in the day. The original owner, Kate said, told everybody no one would ever drive his new truck, according to some of the older drivers. But shortly after purchasing it, a heart attack had taken him off the road and he was forced to putting drivers in the rig. Um, one fellow in town here says, he goes, I was in the truck when we blew up that original motor, but I was not driving. He goes, I <laughs> promise you, I was not the one driving. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, that's, that's so, yeah, wonderful. So There's the, a lot the of history was, there, right? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah. So Mike himself is very resourceful. Um, and so he also did work, dozer work. And so they ended up putting a, um, a cat motor uh, the, from a dozer um, into her, and that's where the uh, 3408 then comes from. Mechanically, um, Cherry Pie is currently exactly how I purchased her. She, um, okay. she had the new way suspension put in um, already, which is you know unique to that truck. Um, she's never been stretched, so that is original wheelbase on her. Um, the 08. He even had the, the pipes on her when I bought it. Um, he really had a lot of pride and joy with this truck. She just had sat for quite some time um, and hadn't, hadn't been used for, for a good number of years. And so, but it was, it was, he, was, he had a lot of pride in, pride in her and, and had her looking pretty, pretty adorable there. <laughs> Wait, how did, when did you get the current uh, state of this truck uh, finished? Like how long did it take? Yep. Um, so from the time we started uh, tearing her apart to when we finally got the pieces back from the painter, it was three years. She sat wow. with just, just the rails and the motor in the shop for three years before we got the cab bunk and hood back from our painter. Wow. And so... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a whole nother story. Um, okay. the, I had the I had the interior completed, um, and it was laying in the office floor for two years wow, prior to waiting. this. And so we had all these components ready to go, but we just couldn't seem to get her back um, from our painter. And uh, <laughs> um, and 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 again, it just is a lot of challenges when you, when you're going through like the COVID and different things like that. And so. Um, but the minute we got her back, and we got her back in January, and that would be of uh, 22, we got her back yes. January 22, and we all looked at each other, that's just family, friends, Jerry, all of us were like, we can do this. We can have her ready for Matt by March, and all she was yes. was, was pieces. We dedicated every night, weekend, every, we used up all our uh, our friend cards. <laughs> <laughs> um everything from you know jerry's sister helping make meals to, so that at least people got a meal when they came to help because that's all they came you know they, they they got a soda and a meal for helping right. and um we just stayed really focused on on, on we can do this and it, you know we just i, I really hacked off nobody gave up I mean, it, there's times it was looking absolutely hopeless, but right. nobody ever said we can't do this. And I, you know, I, I just, it makes me, tears me up a bit because it, it was, he just worked so hard. And yeah. again, none of us had ever done something like this before. And we just had such an amazing community and resources that just stepped up and said, we can do this. You know that that community among uh, of folks that are into truck restoration and into history, you know whether they're working the trucks or not, um, it, it's a real thing, right? And it sounds like it sounds like that's a big part of what made this happen. You, you guys turned that thing around in two months and never had done this before. You, obviously, you had tons of help. Absolutely, you know, and and yeah, you know, you're reaching out to the. The, the staples of, you know, the restoration community. And you got Spencer's out there, you know, in, in Pennsylvania, I believe they are. And we're reaching out to them. You know, you're looking for different parts, looking for some support. 
you know, the, the community that put together things on YouTube. I mean, our dash wiring was in a, a wad on the floor. And we had um, <laughs> Jerry's brother-in-law just sit and work on that. That was his main focus was just trying to get all our wiring. But, you know, it's because other people had, you know, had put out some information prior and you can reach out and you can, you know, turn to the Internet and Facebook and the groups that have done it and 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 get that help and support. And, and you know, what do we where do we go from here? What do we do next? You know, that, that Monday, that Monday before we headed out for Louisville there, um, we still didn't have seats. We didn't have mirrors um, on the truck. We didn't have the, um, the air cleaners. We didn't have the air system on. Um, nothing. And we just worked until about 2 o'clock. Um, well, then Monday night, Tuesday morning, and we just all just looked at each other and said, well, it's either now or never. And let's just load up and leave. Yeah. And it, totally. it, it was just, it was very emotional. I mean, none of us have had sleep, I swear. But, um, and, and we got there and when we pulled in to Matt, you know, would have been uh, Tuesday evening. And uh, mind you, rigged down is Wednesday morning. Uh, All right. <laughs> we drove through rain. It didn't matter at that point. You know, we were just so grateful to have made it and actually just, to, to to grace the arches and right. to be amongst so many amazing trucks and and to just accomplish this even though we weren't as right as we wanted to be it was i was so excited to share her with everybody and just um and proud of 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 being there and what we we pulled off our first year um we would have we competed in um of course antique and um right. paint and motor and we came home with the first place paint. Yes. And um, that that just, you know, it was amazing. It was an amazing feeling because, you know, for so many reasons is, you know, you work so hard to be so careful when you're working around, you know, these trucks and they've got these beautiful paint job on them. And, and you know, we worked so hard with our pinstriper. We had all this hand painting on the truck. And you yep. just so, so careful to not, create a ding or have a problem happen but you're also having to hustle yep. and to get some projects done and, and again hats off to the amazing people that helped because it would have just been one dropped wrench and we'd have been out of the game <laughs> and um so <laughs> you know uh you know one time you did you you dropped your rag and instead of switching up you used the same rag and you shouldn't have you know just something so simple can change the whole trajectory of the project and um just just amazing it is an incredible feeling to to be honored um and recognized for all the work that we put into it you know the rest the awards continue to pile up for whiting and cherry pie not least the recent induction into the house hall of fame kate whiting garnered some more hardware at the walcott truckers jamboree just about a week ago too and was among the rigs in Kenworth's 100th anniversary parade in Chillicothe earlier this year, when the 1973 model was turning 50 years old itself. And as Rich Guida intimated earlier, there's plenty more in store for the truck, if nothing else on Kate Whiting's farm in Wisconsin. We purchased a 1974 um, kettle pot uh, just to kind of match up to her. We're going to work on restoring that. It's in pretty, pretty good shape right now. We're going to finish restoring that through the winter. Okay. And um, yeah, I've I've got a cat, I've got cattle, I've got farming, and and um, we're just looking that, you know, we don't want to just put her in the corner of the shop. And uh, you know, she's she's beautiful. We'd like to get her out there, but we also, you know, realize that it's it's that there's still an honor in in working these beautiful old trucks. And oh, yeah. so we're gonna see where 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 all that lands. Absolutely. Okay. Here's a big thanks to Kate Whiting and Rich Guida for their time and the Howes Company for its continued support of Overdrive Radio. Find more about Howes at H-O-W-E-S, HowesProducts.com, where you can access the virtual Hall of Fame to read more about Whiting as well as eight other members of it. I'll post a link to it and further coverage of that Overdrive of the W900A in the show notes wherever you're listening. Overdrive Radio is on Spotify, Apple and Google Podcasts, SoundCloud, most anywhere you can get podcasts. Big thanks to you for listening. Overdrive Radio is a production of Overdrive, the voice of the American trucker. It's edited and produced by me, 
Todd Dills with the acoustic guitar and other support of trucker songwriter Long Haul Paul Marhofer. The theme is Legend of the Snake Man by Marhofer, featuring the guitar work of Travis, the Snake Man himself, Lamech, Terry Two Socks Richardson on bass, keys by Tisha Mingo, Jim Whitehead, and on drums, Andrew Marshall. The podcast is backed up further by Overdrive's own news editor Matt Cole, social media coordinator Holly Young, executive editor Alex Lockie, and video editors Lawson Rudisil and Andrew Quinn. Keep it pro out there.